I do believe a change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Unity Temple in the Plaza, a place where diversity is praised and the peace and harmony are the rewards. On this day before Martin Luther King Day, who made the statement, I have a dream, and he went on to share his dream, which was fabulous, and I still see that as a possibility for the future. But it also says whenever a country does not have vision, it will perish. And that is not only true for our country collectively, but also for each of us individually. We need to have a vision of what we want to unfold in our lives. For our country, we need to have a vision that we can all come together on. And yes, there'll be problems, and there'll be debates, and there'll be arguments, but we can do that in a peaceful way and not see those differences in opinion as being a roadblock, but rather stepping stones towards reaching out and shaking hands. So today, we dedicate our service, our service to uh, Martin Luther King. When I'll begin the service with the temple chimes, the opening prayer, Geneva Price, and the call to inspiration. Please join with me in this prayer if you choose. On this day, we dedicate ourselves to peace on earth. We accept ourselves without harsh judgment and express appreciation for our individuality. We live without fear to meet the events of this day with confidence. We accept others without prejudice to experience a sense of unity with all people. We honor our earthly environment and recognize a oneness with all creation. In harmony with ourselves, our lives, other people, and all of nature, we live this day with a peaceful mind a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. Thank you, God. Amen. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in His Holy Word. He's never failed me yet. Don't turn around now, we've come this far by faith, by faith, by faith. Sense. There ought to be a law against 
set aside for his recognitions because it should never be just because some cannot see the dream as clear as he they should make it become an illusion I'll know everything that he stood to time will bring for in peace our hearts will bring that tomorrow to live the king happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday why there's still never been a holiday Thank you everyone for joining us for another Sunday Spiritual Celebration Service. Thank you Duke, Cassie, Christopher, Chad, and Cecily for making this happen. And thank you to our amazing musicians today, Robert Farrago, Clay Kirkland, Geneva Price, and Jerome Johnson. You bring it every time. You know the music is the message. Thank you for sharing your gifts and talents. I'd like to start with my special prayer. Lord, fill my mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. There was a nun who worked for a home health care agency, and she was on her way to visit a client. This client would set his watch by her. He enjoyed their visits and could hardly wait for her to arrive. She never was late, but this day she ran out of gas. She noticed there was a gas station nearby, so she walked to it to see if she could borrow a gas can, put enough gas in it to get her car down to the station. Unfortunately, the attendant told her he had just loaned out his only gas can 20 minutes ago and he expected the person back with it in momentarily if she could just wait a few minutes. But this nun wanted to be on time and she knew her client was waiting. So she walked back to her car and rummaged around in the trunk and under the seat and everywhere trying to find something that she could put a little bit of gasoline in, enough to get her to the station. And she saw it, the bedpan. It was intended for the client that she would be visiting. She took the bedpan to the gas station, filled it with gas, and brought it back to the car and proceeded to pour the gasoline from the bedpan into the tank. Two men noticed this nun standing there in her nun's habit, pouring something into her tank from a bedpan. And one of them said to the other, now see, that's what I call faith. So I want to talk to you today about faith. Faith. I'll start with today's daily word, which is dream, which has a lot to do with faith. And the affirmation is, I turn my dreams into reality. Some of the most audacious, bold, history-making events began as dreams, born in the imaginations of those who understood the promise and potential of humanity and worked to realize their dreams. Even if my dreams do not change the world, They have the power to change my life. Today, I remember those whose dreams were fueled by their hard work, their faith, and their determination. I look to their example 
when my dreams feel far away and I'm running low on hope. I rekindle my dreams through my imagination, which keeps them vivid. My strength helps me remain committed to their realization, and my zeal renews my enthusiasm to work toward creating the life and the world of my dreams. And the scripture with today's daily word is from the book of Joel, the second chapter, the 28th verse. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. I want to talk to you today about a man who dreamed dreams and saw visions, a man who, whose imagination gave birth to a movement, a movement that we still celebrate and participate in today. The talk is about faith, and I'm going to share with you the faith of this man. You'll know who I'm talking about. Now, faith appears in the Bible somewhere between 336 to 521 times, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. I chose two scriptures today from the Bible that relate to the faith I'm talking about. In the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first verse, you're more familiar with this one, I'm sure. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the seventh verse, which reads, We live by faith, not by sight. So let me talk to you about this man. Tomorrow we're going to celebrate his birthday. This is someone who believed in the power of dreams, someone whose birthday we celebrate on the third Monday in January, and all 50 states have adopted it as a holiday since the year 2000. Tomorrow, as we celebrate, we reflect on the kind of faith that it took for this man to lead a movement before the world proclaiming freedom, justice, and equality for all people. A movement that is still just as alive today as it was in the 50s and 60s when it was this, merely a vision, merely a dream. Dr. King is most famous for many of us for his speech that he made on August 28, 1963 before thousands of people at the Lincoln Memorial it was called the March on Washington, the March for Poor People, the March for Freedom, for Justice and Equality. I want you to take a listen to that speech, just the last snippet of the speech that focuses on the kind of faith that we have to have to make real change in our world. I have a dream. and nullification. Yeah. One day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. 
from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring in Whitney Capital. In this speech, Dr. King is referencing the promise that the United States of America had reneged on for many of its people. The promise in the Declaration of Independence that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, meaning all people, are created equal and endowed with certain unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Dr. King also went on to say that with faith, we can make sure that that promise is kept with faith. The movement he led was a huge leap of faith, and it has brought us to where we are today. Last Sunday at our Courageous Conversations meeting, Steve Epley, a local school teacher and musician, gave us more history and understanding of Dr. King's rhetorical strategy. It seemed to me that there was so much more that led to the civil rights movement than many of us recognize. Long before that speech was given in 1963, many things had occurred that led Dr. King to follow a dream, to follow a vision. It was one night late when he was about to go to bed, January 27, 1956. And Dr. King's wife, Coretta, and their 10-week-old daughter, Yolanda, were already asleep when the phone rang. And an angry voice on the other end of the phone said, listen, N-word, we're tired of your mess. And if you aren't out of this town in three days, we're going to blow up your house and blow your brains out. Dr. King said, I hung up, but I couldn't sleep. It seemed that all my fears had come on me all at once. I had reached the saturation point. I got out of bed and began to walk the floor. Finally, I went to the kitchen and heated a pot of coffee. I was ready to give up, he says. I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing to be a coward. In this state of ex exhaustion, when my courage had almost gone, I determined to take my problem to God. Dr. King at that time had been working with the M Montgomery bus boycott for over a month, and they were really making a difference and people were paying attention and revenues were going down, and they realized something had to change. But the powers that be felt the only change needed to be to get rid of Dr. King. He had no dog in that fight. He didn't even ride the bus. He was a pastor of a nearby church. But he felt the pain of all those who were suffering in that community from discrimination and racism and segregation. And he made it a point to live his purpose, to walk his talk. At that moment, that night, he said he was exhausted. He said his courage had almost gone, and he was determined at that point that he had nothing left to do but to take this problem to God. He said, with my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. The words I spoke to God that midnight are still very vivid in my memory. I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right. But now, he said, I'm afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face this alone. He says, at that moment, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never before experienced him. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for truth, stand up for justice, stand up for righteousness. God will be at your side forever. 
Almost at once, he says, my fears began to pass from me. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. The outer situation remained the same, but God had given me an inner calm. And with this faith, Dr. King mustered the courage to launch a movement. Three days, just as promised by that phone call in the middle of the night, on January 30, 1956, a bomb exploded on their front porch. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Dr. King goes on to inspire people to live their truth, to put faith to work in action, to put feet to their prayers. He says only God is able, and that is a faith in God that we must rediscover. And with this faith, he says, we can transform bleak and desolate valleys into sunlit paths of joy and bring new light into the dark caverns of pessimism. Don't we need that faith today more than ever? We are all dealing with something. Everyone is dealing with their own situations. Someone who's watching, maybe moving toward the twilight of their life and fearful, or maybe watching a loved one make their transition, maybe even from COVID. Fearful of death, but Dr. King reminds us there's nothing for us to fear. Why be afraid? It's like James Dillett Freeman wrote in The Traveler. This thing that we call death, it is no more than the opening and closing of a door. We are in but one room of God's great mansion. God is able, as Dr. King reminds us. Someone may be anxious about a health challenge right now. Why be anxious? No matter what, God is able. Someone is watching this service who may be on the brink of despair because of the death of a loved one, the breakup of a relationship, or the waywardness of a child. Why despair? God is able to give you the power to endure that which cannot be changed. Dr. King reminds us in his own words that faith is taking the first step when you can't even see the whole staircase. With this faith, he says, we can move mountains. With this faith, we can hew out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, together we can create a world that works for all. Just like the story at the beginning of this message about the nun, she didn't give up. Her faith made her resourceful, and she found a way to get that gas. And Dr. King's response to the call at midnight, through the prayer he found, through prayer he found the faith and courage to carry on, to live his dreams. He was among those who dream dreams and see visions. He was among those audacious, bold, history-making people whose dreams, born in their imaginations, understood the promise and potential of humanity and worked to realize the vision. We are living out the vision of Dr. King and his dream. So I ask you, what is your dream? Where is your faith? Being a Baptist preacher, Dr. King was well indoctrinated in the Word of God. He knew the truth of the prophecy in the book of James, the second chapter, the 14th through the 17th verses. What does it profit a person if someone says they have faith, but they do not have works? Can faith save them? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute for food, and one says to them, go in peace, be warm and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for their body, what does it profit? Therefore, faith itself is, does nothing. Faith without works is dead. Dr. King had an active faith, a living faith. And he had faith in things he had. He really had no reason to be in those positions. But he followed this book of James, this scripture, this teaching. What profits a person if someone says they have faith but do not have works? I'm talking about the kind of faith, the kind of working faith that we read about in the parables of Jesus. In the book of Luke, the 8th chapter, the 43rd through the 48th verses, we read about the bleeding woman who crawled a long distance when she heard Jesus was going to be in the crowd. 
and then she just wanted to touch the hem of his garment. There were so many people there and she didn't want to be seen and she crawled and got as low as she could and she felt something and she thought it was his hem and lo and behold it was and he said, who touched me? And when she fessed up and said, it was me, I touched you. He said, without even knowing her situation or she didn't know he knew, but he felt it. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your faith has made you well. And it's just like the kind of faith that Dr. Martin Luther King demonstrated throughout his life. It's the faith aligned with unity's fifth principle. We walk our talk. We live the truth we know. We make a difference. It's that kind of faith, a faith in action. It's the kind of faith that Peter had when Jesus commanded him to walk on water. In the scriptures, we read that it only takes a tiny bit of faith to create real change. In the book of Matthew, the 17th chapter, the 20th verse, we read, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will be done, and nothing will be impossible to you. And with this faith, this teeny tiny faith, we too can move mountains. And we're facing some mountainous obstacles right now in our society, in our nation. Right now in our homes, our communities, our hospitals, on our streets, we're facing some mountainous obstacles. But with this faith, we can stand together, march together, struggle together in love. With this faith, we can overcome. With this faith, we can hew out from a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. Dr. King knew all too well the sacrifice and risk he was taking for him and his family. And that's the primary reason we have this holiday. That's the reason Stevie Wonder and others have written songs in tribute to Dr. King. He was like David, facing Goliath. He stood up to the powers that be and called this nation on its lie. And that launched a movement. With this faith, we can use the same force of love that Dr. King talked about that can turn an enemy into a friend. With this faith, we can choose to love because hate is too great a burden to bear. He forced everyone to focus on the fact that we are all God's children, and as such we are heirs to all that is God and all that is of God. That resonates with unity's first and second principles, that there is one presence and one power active in our lives and in the universe, God the good omnipotent, and we are co-creators with God. We are inheritors of the goodness of God. That is our inheritance. When Dr. King speaks of this faith, he, his words align with unity's third principle, that we each connect with God through our prayers. And he demonstrated that over and over, and especially that dark night of the soul in 1956 at his kitchen table. In many of his speeches, he emphasizes the power of the individual to overcome obstacles through their thoughts. One of them that resonates with me is, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. All you need is a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. So let us make Dr. King's holiday a day on and not a day off, a day to exercise our faith, to do those greater works, by following Dr. King's example, to acknowledge and be part of the good that is in the world. And how can we do that? You know, I said earlier, Martin Luther King Day is the only federal holiday that is a national day of service. So we could spend this day volunteering, doing something good for someone else. Now the pandemic does present a challenge, but there's always something we can do. So I made a list of a few things that you might be interested in. Learn about Dr. King's life and teachings. You can go online to the King Institute's Liberation Curriculum. That's a good place to start. Put your faith to work. Look for places where you can give back with no expectation of anything in return. People are in need of food. They're in need of clothing, a kind word, a loving gesture, a helping hand. Find ways to get involved and stand up for peace, justice, and equality for all. You can join dosomething.org in their Strength Through Service project. You can learn the truth about the nation's history and not some of the lies that we've been told by reading about Dr. King, looking at books and searching the internet. Watch the entire I Have a Dream speech on YouTube 
and spend time reflecting on some of his, his actions and his words. Remember Dr. King's message of kindness and respect. I like to say in a world where you can do and be almost anything, the least you can be is kind. As family and friends, ask your family and friends who've lived through Dr. King's life, who've lived through that time, like me and others, what it was like for them. Learning about the past can be a great way to put things in perspective and remind us how much we can appreciate that we live by faith and not by sight, and we've come this far by faith. You can watch a documentary, a movie, a true story. One of my favorites I encourage you to watch is a movie called Have a Little Faith. I think you'll enjoy it. You can be your own version of Martin Luther King Jr. by doing some good in the world, starting with your family. Make it a family affair. Observe Martin Luther King Day with your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor's children. You can do it on Zoom. You can do it on FaceTime, whatever means you have. Write letters, emails, phone calls to your representatives at the state and national levels. Remind them to keep the faith and their challenge to work together as sisters and brothers or perish together as fools. You can join me and others tomorrow, January 18th at 2 o'clock Central Time on Unity World Headquarters Facebook Live as we present A Day of Love, a celebration of love honoring Dr. King. There are so many things that we can do. There's always something you can do to make the world a better place, starting with yourself. As we prepare for Shantae to move us into a time of meditation, I invite you to allow yourself to reflect on these words. There's a new product at Unity you can get from unity.org called the Positive Prayer Wheel for the Cycles of Life. And I want to talk to you about one of those wheels is about three of them are about faith to renew and restore your faith. Let me see through the eyes of faith, the truth of the divine power and presence at the core of my experience. By faith, I trust what I cannot see. As circumstances unfold, I remain faith filled and faithful. I know good and only good now and in the days ahead. And with this faith, we do not have to see the whole staircase. We only need to take the first step. And with this faith, the size of a mustard seed, we have the power to hew out from a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And with this faith, we can all stand together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. Thank you, Dr. King. Happy birthday.
challenges arise, that we will overcome them. Faith that when life brings us hardships, we will rise above them. Nonetheless, we continue to walk by faith. Let's take a moment to breathe and center ourselves. Inhale, breathing in faith. Exhale, breathe out and release doubt. Inhale, breathing in confidence. Exhale, breathing out and releasing fear. Inhale, breathing in hope. Exhale, breathing out and releasing despair. As you continue to breathe, raising your spiritual vibration and energy. Contemplate walking through life's challenges with unwavering faith as we go into the silence. Every day, we continue to find the strength to walk in faith, and so it is. The word is on your lips, the word is in your heart, the word is deep within you. Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. Christ dwells in our hearts through faith.
This is a time of the service where we take a moment or two to express our gratitude, both in our personal lives and for the beautiful country that we have, and also for the one power and the one presence in the universe that provides us with everything that we need to live a comfortable and fulfilling life. So this morning, I'd like to give special thank you to Reverend Sandra Campbell. I've said it before, I'll say it again, the best associate minister I've ever had. She's a dream come true for this church. And also, I'd like to thank our musicians for today. Jerome Johnson, Clay Kirkland, Robert Farrago, and the lovely Geneva Price.
This concludes our service, and we'll now end the service with the prayer for protection and the peace song. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us wherever we are. God is, and all is well. Please join with me in singing the peace song. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God. Joy.